Hi, Kelly. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you're here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So this is, you are an expert in all things stress, and I am so glad that we are sitting down because at the time of this recording, we are heading into the holiday season. And I know as entrepreneurs, we're thinking about year end, we're thinking about planning for the next year, and we're thinking about all of the personal stuff that we have to get done before Mm -hmm. the end of the year. Yes. It can be a lot right now. Yes. Busy time of the year. It really is. And I think that one of the first things we learn to say about our business is I'm stressed. I have too much to do. And I think it plays with our mindset. Absolutely. So um, interesting that you say that. So we have something called a reticular activating system. And our reticular activating system is something that is designed to make sure that what we focus on is what we're seeing more of. And I think the the you know greatest, easiest example is I just recently bought a car. And when I decided the type of car I wanted, the next thing you know, it's everywhere. And I'm seeing it everywhere. Before I even started looking at that car, I don't even know that I noticed how many were out there, right? But mm-hmm. then you notice it. And so when we... As as humans, right, not just entrepreneurs, but as humans, when we are telling ourselves we are stressed, then our brain is going, oh, you're stressed. You need to be stressed. Let me show you more stress. Let me show you more stress. And then it continues. You you look at everything through that lens of I'm stressed. Yes, you are building those neural pathways. I always talk about this. You're building those neural pathways. You're strengthening them. And Mm -hmm. these are the ones we want to actually fade into the background. These are not the things we want to be the thorough thorough few uh, paths for our ideas. Right, right. And it can really, um, when you when you do that, then you also like you just restrict your creativity. Mm -hmm. You restrict um, your energy going out. Like there's so, there's so many different negative things, right? When you're in, when you keep telling yourself, I think the Mm -hmm. other thing that women often tell themselves, um, is women specifically, I don't think men say this, but women are like, I'm a hot mess. Right. And then it's like, oh, well, let me show you proof that you're a hot mess. Mm -hmm. Here's that. Instead of, you know, if we switch that around and we're like, I'm fabulous. (laughs) then we'd be finding all the ways that we were fabulous. Mm -hmm. It is so, it's almost like a light switch. You can just flick Mm -hmm. it on and it just shifts everything in your life to be able to just shift those words you're even using with yourself. But I think there's a lot of misconceptions about how we can actually manage our stress. I think a lot of people say, oh, we have to, you know, sit down and meditate and go, hmm for hours mm-hmm. at a time or say no to everything. Right. Yes. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about some of these misconceptions that are floating. Yeah. Around. So, yes, I think that's great. So, you know, some of the common misconceptions that, that I see, mm-hmm. um, one is that people think that all stress is detrimental mm-hmm. and it's not because there is some good stress. And, you know, really, if we look at a curve, We want some stress because if we are down on one side with no stress, we're probably bored and that leads to depression and you, you know, and then on the other side, if we have too much stress, then comes the overwhelmed and the anxiousness, right? So it's that, it's more of that excitement stress. Like, so there is some, because, you know, you're doing something that you're passionate about and yet responsibilities lie with that, but it's really making sure that you have that balance and knowing that not all stress is detrimental. Some is okay. Um, Another misconception is um, that stress is caused by external factors. And, you know, the biggest thing that I do that I help my clients with is we really dive into the internal and it's the internal that causes the external. And so I think, you know, the myth is, is that it's the external stress. It's other people. It's what I'm doing. For me, it's if I look at my own stress, it's who am I being that I am causing my own stress. So to me, stress is a mind game. It is completely a mind game. And then the third one is um, that 
I think people feel like we really have to get rid of all stress, right? Like, like if we want to be stress-free, we need to just get rid of all the things that are causing our stress. Well, I don't know. We, we can't get rid of our families. Well, you could, but it may, but it may not be, be really lonely idea. and then you're going to yes, have other exactly. issues. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I, there's just things that, that you can't get rid of there there that are a part of life. Mm-hmm. And so then it's really understanding that when you have the coping strategies that you need and you have done what I call the internal work, mm-hmm. then you can be more resilient and you can manage your stress better, right? It doesn't mean you're never going to have stress. It means you're managing it in a way that is very healthy and and appropriate. I love that you said that we do need some stress. You know, mm-hmm. otherwise we, you did not say this. These are my words. You end up kind of being a couch potato yeah. in, in life. And that's certainly not what most of us want. Especially mm-hmm. if you're an entrepreneur, you did not sign up to be an entrepreneur and want to be a couch potato at the same time. <laughs> but I love, you know, what comes to mind for me is the concept of flow and flow happens when we get in that zone, when we have yes. a balance of skill and challenge, but challenge yes. by default is going to have some stress. Right. Right. And as entrepreneurs, I think we are always, I think it's in our nature that we're always moving forward. Mm -hmm. We're always creating something, developing something, improving something. Like, I I just think that's part of entrepreneurship. We, you know, if not, we'd all be in jobs that Mm -hmm. we just did the same thing every day. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so, uh, so with that, there is, there is going to be that challenge Mm -hmm. and then knowing how to keep yourself joyful and sane and, pleasurable to be around. (laughs) Oh, I love, thank you for bringing that up because when we get stressed, we are not the best to be around. Mm -hmm. We get cranky, we get cynical, we get snippy Mm -hmm. and short. And that happens with our clients, with our friends, with our family. Mm -hmm. And that can be really isolating. Yes. Have you ever taken the, um, the disc assessment years ago? Okay. Yes. So in the DISC assessment, and I like to do what's called the trimetrics EQ, Mm -hmm. and I do this with my clients. And so you're looking at your behaviors, how you do things. Mm -hmm. You're looking at your driving forces of why you do things. And then you're looking at your emotional intelligence. But one of the things that the DISC shows you in your report is it shows you under stress, how you perceive yourself and then how others perceive <laughs> perceive you. And when you see this report and you're like, wow, I feel like I'm handling stress very well. Like, I feel like I just, I got it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you see the words that like people then associate with you when you're stressed and you're like, yeah, I don't really want to come off that way, you know? And, and that's how people are seeing me. It's, it's really eye opening. Yes. I, yes. The more, and you know, that goes back to being, doing that internal work, being Mm -hmm. very self-aware of everything that's happening internally. Mm -hmm. And then how does that come out in our behaviors, in our mindset, in everything? Yeah. When I was um, in the thick of my stress, which is what led me into doing this work. So Mm -hmm. in the thick of my stress, I look back now and I'm like, I'm lucky my kids still like me. And I'm lucky my husband stayed married to me. (laughs) And it it probably wasn't as bad as I think back in my head. But yet at the same time, like I really recognize that I was snippy. I would overreact to things. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, and for me, um, I, this is when I came up with my stress personalities. Okay. Okay is from looking back and going, mm, here's how I was acting and here's who I was being. So do you want me to share some I of those? I do. Yeah. I want to know about this. Yes. So my stress personalities, you'll all recognize them. And the biggest question I get is, can I be all of them? <laughs> oh my yes, gosh. Yes, you can. Because different contexts, right? Like at different times, you can be different. But, you know, so stress personalities, the, the overachiever, the high achiever is a stress personality. Um, because you're always 
uh, you know, your expectations yeah. and what you want to do. And you're always up here moving along, right? And at, at a very fast pace. Um, the perfectionist is a stress personality. Mm. And, you know, when you are in that, that perfectionist, which then often causes analysis paralysis, yep. and then you're not doing anything, and mm -hmm. that is stressful, mm -hmm. right? Um, being a comparer is very stressful. So, and, and the, the easiest way to know if you're a comparer is what happens when you get on social media? Yes. What happens to your mood immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the being a comparer is huge for stress. Um, rule followers, you know, like I used to be very black and white until mm -hmm. I learned there were 50 shades of gray. <laughs> right? I know. And so, you know, now I can look at things a little bit more like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, there, there isn't a right or a wrong. There's a whole lot of things in between, right? Mm -hmm. And when you get stuck in that dogma, if we want to call it, then that can be very stressful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I when I think about business owners in particular, I typically see through my clients three different things. I see distracted Dana and distracted Dana has um, just lack of focus. She's got, you know, 17 windows open. She has stickies all over the place and her mind is like all over the place. Right. Yep. And that can be stressful because then we don't always accomplish what we need to accomplish. And we're just distracted. Right. I see disengaged Daphne and that is where you're not present. And so you're doing what you need to do, but you're not present and you become disengaged. And then the other one is um, Superwoman Sally. And, you know, Superwoman Sally is like, I can do it all. And yep. yet at the same time, that's that used to be me, mm -hmm. right? I can do it all. I don't need help with anything. I'm going to be the best mom, the best wife, the best. At the time, I was an employee, actually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was doing all of those things. And, you know, just going at it 90 to nothing, I was also very, um, I was, it's interesting because if you looked at my healthy habits, mm -hmm. I was taking care of myself. However, I was the over, I was okay. the over exercise. I was the over, like if mm -hmm. there's, if this is high impact, I'm yep. doing high impact up here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was yes. doing everything over and that's the balance too, right? Like as mm -hmm. we talked about the couch potato to the here. And so I had to come back and I had to go hold tight a minute. Okay. And I really had to, and now I'm constantly, when I feel that stress, that overwhelm coming on, mm -hmm. I'm like, what stress personality is coming up right now? Is it holding me back? Is it like, do I need it right now? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I have like specific strategies for each personality okay. that I know can decrease my stress quickly. Okay. And I think that's the key. It's not, nothing I'm hearing you say is you have to just tackle this stress and say no to it and banish it. It's recognizing it mm -hmm. and then taking appropriate actions. Yes. Yes. So let's go back to the perfectionist, right? Okay. So when, when I'm being a perfectionist, I have to recognize and be like, I'm never going to get this. Like I'm either going to be up till three in the morning or I can go, is that picture good enough? Like, you know, I'm creating yeah. PowerPoints, I'm a speaker, you yes. know, things like that. And so, you know, I'm looking for the best image and I'm like, that image that I already chose 10 minutes ago is probably just fine. I don't need a better one and move on. The best thing for perfectionists, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is a deadline. You have to have a deadline because when you have a deadline, it must be finished. And at some point you have to go, well, this is good enough. <laughs> this is good enough. I do that with my clients. Even when I'm yes. guiding them, I say, okay, so you're going to have this to me by the end of the day, right? Yes. They say, yes. yes. And I say, great. Can't wait to see it. Sure yes. enough. By the end of the day, it comes in. If I don't say that it's, they're still choosing a picture. Like you said, because we Correct. all fall into this, you know, none of us are immune. I bet you still do that. Sometimes I know I do. Oh yes. It's, it's recognizing it. It's yes. going, wait, you're being a perfectionist. Step back. And let's let good enough be good enough right now. Because the, you know, I, I'm a big fan of remembering a lot of times the, the people we're interacting with are humans and <laughs> guess what? They're not perfect either. 
Right. They don't expect perfection. Right. They expect you to expect you to show up and be authentic, be genuine, be open. Yes. yes. Not to and be I, perfect. Yes. And I think it's, it's understanding the difference between perfection. None of us will ever be perfect. We just no. can't. And just being excellent, like, you know, going back and going in my excellence, here's the first picture I chose. Could we pause you know there saying? for a moment? In my excellence, can everyone just put that on a sticky note on their mirror and start the morning in my, in my excellence, I am, Mm -hmm. and just start shifting how you talk about yourself and the work you're doing. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) so what, what is one, even just one action Mm -hmm. item that people can implement today to maybe start becoming more aware of the stress that they're carrying or, and then maybe what can they do to -hmm. take a step forward to maximizing how they use that stress in a good way? Yeah. So, you know, I think one of the biggest things that, that we need to be aware of is we need to be aware of the mental and emotional clutter that is rolling Mm -hmm. around in our mind. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, one of the ways to really bring awareness to it is a start being intentional about recognizing it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I, you probably talk about this, our subconscious mind, it is running programs that we don't even know are running in the background. Right. And so it's really starting to be aware and be intentional about recognizing them and recognizing anytime negative thoughts are coming in. Mm-hmm. And then I think, um, you know, dealing, dealing with it, right. Dealing with the trauma. So I help people do that in one day. It does not take years. It can be done in one day. I do a deep dive eight hour, but so really going, Hmm, I would like to really clean up the mental and emotional chaos so -hmm. that I can focus. I can be my best. I can show up authentically, you know, that way. So I think to step back from that, it's really about breathing because when you become intentional, about your breath. Number one, you get out of fight or flight. Yes. Number two, it just causes a pause, a pause from whatever stress personality is going on that is, you know, bringing in the stress. It causes you to pause. It's like a, you know, a, Mm -hmm. like a cut from it. And then, like I said, just doing that breathing allows you to bring some awareness in. Mm -hmm. It allows you to slow down. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to, for your body to go, oh, we're okay. Our body thinks that we're being chased by a lion anytime we're stressed out. And people, we are no longer chased by lions, you know, unless you're in the African jungle. So, and we're not. So it's, it's reminding our body that we are okay because yes, there is good stress, But if you're in chronic stress, even low chronic stress all the time, it is going to affect your health. It's going to, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and And how much and how bad. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that's, I mean, disease comes from that, you know, anyway. So I think it's breathing, breathing and allowing you to just regather and refocus. And I know that it's simple and yet I don't know about you all, but If you have an Apple watch and if you have the program that tells you to breathe, the first thing you need to do is be aware of what happens when that goes off. Because most of the time, those of us that are just high achievers and, you know, we're like, I don't have time to breathe. Yes. (laughs) Dismiss that notification. Exactly. Now's not a good time to breathe. Right. (laughs) And that right there needs to be a sign. Mm -hmm that alone. Now you don't have to breathe every time your watch goes off, you schedule in when it is right. If you're in the flow of things, you know, whatever, but, but know that there are times in the day that are really good times to stop and breathe and check in for, with yourself and become mindful. Yeah. One of my favorite things that I learned to do with breathing was to take a peace walk. And so I would intentionally slow my step so that I would breathe in and then breathe out the word peace yes. audibly. 
Yeah. And what happens is you're still moving. So for those of you who don't want to just sit and breathe, you can yes. move and breathe. Yes. Yes. And that helps, that helps get the energy going too, when you're moving with it. Yep. Yes. And it does. And it slows your step down. So you're not just going full force ahead. Mm -hmm. So it allows your entire nervous system to calm and you yeah. are audibly telling your brain, Hey, peaceful. This Pe is a yes. peace zone. Yes. And you can do it as you walk to the kitchen to make your yes. lunch. You can yeah. do it on the way to the bathroom. You can do it that, anytime. That is the greatest thing about breathing is that you can do it anywhere. And really no one needs to know that you're doing it, right? You know what I mean? It's you just mm -hmm. can do it. So so for me, I, I love what you just said about saying the piece and slowing your movement down. I typically teach the five, five, seven breath, oh, which yes. is inhale for five, hold for five and exhale for seven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do that just a couple of times and you really like it. It, it's, it's powerful. It's, it's really, really powerful. I was, do we have, do I have we do. time? We're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. So I was just on um, a conference. It was a research conference okay. and it was talking about um, really like mindset management. Okay. And journaling and breathing and just a quick five minute meditation. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. Five minutes is fine. But what they were doing is they were looking at the, the neurological biofeedback. And if you put the cap on, you know, you've seen those yep. caps that have all the wires coming out of it. And you think about something that's triggering you. And then you start doing the work right? It's mm -hmm. that internal work around your triggers and the three things journal about it. Three, three breaths and some meditation, like five minutes of meditation. When you do that for a long period of time, your brain will change and you will see inside the, I mean, it will change gamma, beta, alpha, delta, like all of it, it can change. And it's fascinating. And I think when we, when we can see that concrete, because people are like meditate, but you really don't have a concrete, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't get your blood work done and be like, this is my meditation. You know what I'm saying? Right. But when you can see the, your brain and how you respond to triggers, like mm -hmm. concretely it will work. Yeah, it does. And the research around that is so neat and it's mm -hmm. just rock solid. That's the thing. Yes. We yes. know. Our brain research has shifted and shot forward so much mm -hmm. in, in the last 20 yes. years yeah. that we can and, see this happening. Yes. And that is why I feel like the research that goes along with what's happening in our body mm -hmm. is all based on our thoughts. And when you know that, right. And so when you know that there is stored energy and the stored energy is coming from resistance mm -hmm. and the resistance is coming from your thoughts, your beliefs, you know, all of that. And then it's showing up in places. And when you know that that's when you're like, oh, I need to do that internal work. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you want to do that because it's going to make a difference. It will. It's not fluffy. I think a lot of times people hear internal work and they think, oh, that's fluffy. It's not. Yeah, woo woo. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. No, it's not. No, it's, I mean, it's really not. And it's, it's so impactful. And it's interesting mm -hmm. because my clients that do the one day, mm -hmm. they will even, they're like, Kelly, I, I, I've been to therapy. Like, I'm good. And I, oh, great. Like, great. I'm glad you went to therapy. That's great. We do the one day deep dive and they're like, we didn't oh. do anything. We didn't do anything like that. They're like, this really cleared the things up. And I'm like, I know because it's neurological mm -hmm. and it's different than talk therapy. It's it's different and it really works. What I do works with the unconscious mind. And so, like you said, those pathways, like it fries them and it makes it make a new pathway mm -hmm. that is the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Very oh. powerful. Oh my goodness. I have goosebumps because I, I love the power of all of this and the fact that we have control over it. You know, this yes. is not something that's outside of anyone's reach. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so interesting because it's very, you know, when I went through one of my first trainings that, that taught me some of this, mm -hmm. you know, I learned the language. Are you being, are you living at cause or are you living in effect? And when you're living in effect, 
there's your reasons, your excuses, all the things, Mm -hmm. or are you getting up every day and are you living at cause for your life? Meaning, are you taking responsibility? Are you doing what you need to do? And, you know, and we all have the power to do that, which is that alone is, is awesome. And there's so much hope in that, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Oh, that is so powerful. And I know that I've got listeners thinking, okay, I've been toying with doing some internal work (laughs) and now I'm hearing this and thinking maybe I should do it. Now's the time. How Mm -hmm. can we get in touch with you and learn more about that deep dive day and other things that you offer? How can we get in touch with you? Yes. So I'm on LinkedIn and I will spell my name. It's Kelly, K-E-L-L-I, Rissy, R-I-S-S-E. And my company is called Rise Up and Live Wellness. And honestly, on LinkedIn, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Facebook, I would just love for you to shoot me a message. I'm getting ready to do a big Black Friday. I don't know when you're putting this out. So I'm not sure when this is coming out. However, if you say that you heard me on this podcast... I will honor the Black Friday special because oh. as podcasters, we never know. You know what I mean? I don't yep. know your schedule. So, um, but I will honor the Black Friday. I will honor the Black Friday with that. And that is for my deep dive specifically. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. That's so amazing, Kelly. Uh, and I'm going to link, I'll link your LinkedIn Perfect. and everything in the show notes. So you don't even have to type it in. All you have to do is click and say, yes, I need some help. I'm ready. <laughs> Yes. Let's do that and, deep dive. Yes. And I offer a, you know, to start with, I offer a complimentary strategy session oh. to even see if this is the right thing for someone. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it may not be, you yeah. might need something else. And as a, as an expert, I know when mm-hmm. I can help and I know when, nope, you need other things right yeah. now, you know? And so I do, I do always start with that 30 minutes and it's complimentary. Oh, that sounds amazing. Okay, so we have talked about a lot today. We talked about um, good and bad stress. We talked about our stress personalities from the overachiever to the perfectionist to the comparer to the rule follower. (laughs) (laughs) I see myself in all of those sometimes, Uh like you said, you know, it's pretty common. But I love what you're saying and reminding us of that when we become more aware of the mental and the emotional clutter, we can actually start to make changes for the better. And it's not about getting rid of stress. It's Mm -hmm. about really using it to its best capabilities that it really does serve a place in our lives to help Mm -hmm. us move forward. But if we take it too far or not quite in the right direction, it can actually be detrimental. Yes. Yeah. So it really is finding the balance Mm -hmm. and having the strategies to get you to the balance. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining me today on the podcast. I cannot wait for everyone to connect with you and to learn more about doing that internal work and really managing their stress effectively. Good. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.